Alright, before 92 here. Hope everyone have a wonderful day, and I'm here with who? You're with Roman Kelly. Alright, and what did you do at this uh, regional, and what regional was it currently? Yeah, we played in the side deck uh, remote regional, and we took first place with prank tips. Wow, alright, before we get into the video, uh, you want to give any shout outs to anyone? Yeah, shout out to Guaranteed Cards. Uh, get your cards guaranteed. If you see us on TCG, make sure to support and follow uh, Guaranteed Cards on Instagram. Shout out to my lab partner, Colin, and she, uh, yeah, shout out to the side deck for hosting it. You know, we've been playing in them for a bit, uh, climbing up towards the top, and it felt good to finally get one. All right, sounds good. And I'll put all that, this, um, that stuff in the description so you guys can check it out. And yeah, be, um, what what made you want to play prank kids besides uh, base, PK, and stuff like that? Yeah, so honestly, I, I changed my mind the day of the tournament. Um I signed up in the morning. I was going to play Cyrus Eldridge, but I was like, I, I've been playing it, and I was one dot scaper short. So I was like, you know what? I, I was like, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say burnt out, but like when people see me, they know I want to play the Cyrus Eldridge. So I was like, I'm just going to throw a curveball and play something different. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And it's crazy that like um, a lot of um, uh, prank kids are doing really popular, and like it's good for lane time, and like you do what you got to do. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. And that, that weighed a big factor on my decision. I was like, you know what? Um, when you're playing these other combo decks, sometimes your win condition causes you to burn. So I kind of wanted to do the opposite of that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Let's see your wonderful deck list, bud. All right. So some of it's standard. Some of it's a little bit, uh, you know, a little different. But we will start off with the starters. So you've got <clears throat> three Prank Kid Dropsies. I'll flip them for you. Maybe that'll help. Yep. Three prank kit dropsies, uh, gain life points, 1,000. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, we have three of the Lampsies, burn your opponent for 500. So, I mean, in a, in a perfect world where your combo goes off twice between your turn and your opponents, you just you did a uh, 3,000 life point differential with just resolving these two twice. Um, we played three of the Fansies, one of the main cards in getting your combo going. You kind of want it to be your second second piece in the combo. And then two Roxies. Not not a brick completely, but uh, it's kind of a must-have. If your hand's bad, it's a great card. If your hand's good, just a little bit uh, unfortunate. Would you play Yeah, that's it. We, we have uh, 11 starters. That's true. Uh, would you play uh, a third one, um, that last card? Of Roxies, no. Two, two is ideal. It could... It could really be one, but you, you know, just in case you want to have that extra body, it's not terrible it's, and it's not great by any means. So it's kind of just there. True, but no, true. three, three, I think would definitely be too much. For sure, for sure. So yeah, that's that for starters. Next, we have DPE package, the bricks, Dasher and Celestial. Kind of gotta have them. Hate seeing them, but they do their own thing, of course. Then we've got the Brave Package, three Water Enchantress, and the Griffin. As far as the monsters go, self-explanatory, Omni Negate, Big Body. Like, there's some games where, like, if you don't see a starter, you can just hold yourself over enough with these guys here. Oh, and... Three. Uh, yeah, and yeah, what's up? Yeah, and before we get into the spells, I was surprised, uh, no hand traps. I was wondering, uh, what's your dear... Oh, you know what? Yeah, let, actually, let's get into that. Oh, God, hand traps are the biggest <laughs> part of the deck, actually. So they should be second. Right. Hand traps are the, the biggest part of this deck. So for for the ratios, we are playing Triple Ash Blossom. Last format, I wasn't a big fan of the Ash, but this format, you kind of just have to have it, and it comes up when you need it. Like, Flutteries is one of the toughest matchups, so just having having some kind of negation is, is kind of critical. We played Triple Nib. Uh, it's a recovery play if your opponent does it to you and you have it. Um, or if you're just going second and you see this, you just know you're in good shape. Uh, Double Ghost Ogre, just probably one of the best hand traps in the format right now with all the brave stuff going around and keeping bodies off board. That's true. Could, uh, could be three, mm -hmm. but it's once per turn. So it's like yeah. if you open any more than one, they're not live. That's true. Double Veiler. Uh could be more in perms, but they do their own thing. It's a tuner, which doesn't really matter because they're not playing health, but not once per turn. So that's a little bit of the game changer. Double Ghost Bell. 
stop the DPE, stop the water enchantress, um, anything else that you might need to get rid of. Also, fun fact and flunderies, it can turn off the street. And then last one, infirm. Single infirm. Could be more. Could replace the veilers. That's something we might test with. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, 13 hand traps. Love to see them. Sounds good. Sounds good. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. If I would I change anything about these, I don't. I don't think so. They're super effective, and uh, yeah, everything's pretty good. I don't. I don't think there's any other hand trap. Maybe, maybe droll in the main that could potentially come up, but that's that's to be determined. Mm -hmm. And then we are on to the spells. So we'll go back to the brave package. Real standard, three right, one faithful, one Draco back. We need the rarity upgrade on the Draco back. This card is <laughs> too, pow too powerful to be a rare. Like <laughs> That's true. Yeah, like the bounce and how many times. Like even brave players, they'll attack the token. And when Fateful is live, it just doesn't get destroyed. And, you know, if they don't have anything else, they kind of just got to pass on it and makes this live again. So, That's yeah, true. this card is insane. doesn't have to be explained, really. Uh, and then we go into the prank kid stuff. We have uh, two place. I think three is too much. Like, you're happy if you see it. And if you don't see it, hopefully you got the body. But it does help when you're pushing for game to get the attack boost. Not only are prank kids, it does boost all your monsters. So when you're pushing for game, super solid. One pandemonium. Um, there could be outrage at this. Some, some people like two, some like one. Um, I just feel like if I'm in a game state where I need more than one, I may have caused an error somewhere, or I got to bounce back anyways. One Pranks, that's kind of the standard, very good card. You get re uh, Digusso Emerald Effect in the end phase, and you get a token. DP package, two Fusion Destiny. You can only play two. Generic stuff, we got two Droplets. You have enough hand traps where I think you can play two and get away with it. The Saki one of called by one cross out designator for offense and defense. Foolish and burial. Full, ah, foolish burial gets the enchantress faster. For sure. Was the forbidden droplet was two was the perfect number? Or I I would say so. I, I feel like yeah, absolutely. I feel like with how much you dig in this deck, um like by the time your turn ends. Half, you know, if, if all goes well, half your deck is gone. So seeing this is really not a problem. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of opening up, like, more than two. Yeah, I think I think two is ideal for me, at least. I've never had an issue with it. You want to do your extra deck first? Uh, it's up to you. I don't really mind. Whichever uh, you prefer to go first. Yeah, I think extra. I think that, that's kind of the standard. So we got the extra deck here. <laughs> we'll start with the prank kids. One meow moo. Meow meow moo. <laughs> you can only play one because it's that good. Doesn't do anything really on field, but in the graveyard, it's just too insane. Too too much advantage. Double doodle do. Um, I've seen people play three. Not very necessary when you're going to shuffle one back with the pranks anyways. Like I said, I tend to think that if you get yourself into a game situation where you need your third one, you've already lost the battle. Mm -hmm. Bow wow bark. Um, Beefs your monster up by a thousand when you're pushing for game, and also main part of the start of that or main part of the combo that protects your prank hit monsters from be, being destroyed by card effects. And the roaring roaster never used it, but I think it's a good card. It's strong, so uh, but yeah, never used it. Next, I think we have some generic stuff as far as link goes. Link Karibo, uh, it's for when you get nibbed and you need to extend. Link Spider for Verte. Uh, we've got. Pray to Plant, Verte, Anaconda for your Fusion Destiny. Uh, Nightmare Unicorn to climb into this guy, the boss. Access code. So that's your generic Link monster. Then for Fusions, you've got Double Battle Butler. Um, only used one. It could come up. Phoenix Enforcer, one of the best cards in the game right now. And then the two Pranks, Weather Washer, Rocket Ride. I don't play the Instant Fusion package, so this never really came up. But this this guy is really good. Weather Washer's dope. All right, for sure. Um, was there um, a time that you could have made Totally Awesome? I see some build play Totally Awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing I will I will look into going forward. I could have made a Toad, 
and Toad is one of my favorite cards. So that's like definitely something I'll be looking into. So there, <clears throat> there is some flex spots. So I will see if I can put Toad in there. Yeah, comes up. Actually, now that I think about it, you can even get your enchantress back off of Toad. <laughs> Don't tell too many people that. Um, then we got the side deck. So here's where it gets really sacky. A lot of two ofs. We have the new addition to Contact C. Whoa, what is that? Yeah, that Contact C right there. That yeah. says if your opponent normal or special summons, you drop this on their board and they ha the next link, Synchro, Fusion, or XYZ they go into, they have to use this card. Wow. So it's like a level six body that's just awkward to have on their board. Yeah, that's kind of like uh, Flying C back in the day. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of decks where that comes up. Your opponent summons a level three, wants to go into Cherubini, you just hit him with this, and it just kind of just stops that play. Double DD Crow, could be three. This card's just insane right now. Crow's pretty awesome. Doesn't doesn't have to be a monster, uh, monster so there's that. Double Token Collector, because you want your Brave stuff to go off. Not theirs. Um, double Lancia. People still like to banish. Flunderies is the nightmare matchup. So keep the Lancia on deck. Also, the Drolls. Because, you know, Drolls pretty good. Keep what they have in their hand. When, um, when you play three, go ahead. When you play three Lancia or three Drone Lockburn? Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, yeah. I, I would say... Okay, so yes. Because Flunderies is the toughest matchup. I, I truly believe that. So yes, anything that can help stop them, which is the Drone, the Lancia, probably could go to three. All right. Hands sure. down. Replacing maybe the Contact C or the Token Collector. That's that's to be determined. These you can't live without. You got the Triple Cosmic Cyclone, Back Row Scary, Feather Duster. His Mystic Mind and Back Row is scary. I did get Mystic Mind in a Flunderies match that her Red Reboot her traps off. For sure, for sure. Thanks for showing the deck profile. It's actually kind of interesting. It's been a while I've seen somebody play two of because usually um, most players play three of in almost every side deck. <laughs> but at least it works for you. Yeah, yeah, it works. It's and uh, I think it makes siding a lot easier. Yeah, that's true. All right, your boy Cyberhorn92 is signing out. Thanks for the deck profile. Of course, man. Take care. Follow us on IG.